friends, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge University, episode number 28. I believe it's episode number 28. We're talking about access lock knives. Here's a Griptilian, which I'm super thankful for. One of my viewers gave this to me a couple of years ago, almost three years ago now. And the access lock. Oh, I have had a love-hate relationship with the access lock since my very first knife that I got with it. And this is the only Benchmade I've ever owned. I'm a budget knife guy. That's just what I am. So, you know, I've got San Ramuz with an access lock on it. Uh, even older San Ramuz like this guy here. And uh, the access lock's kind of cool. But some of them, they're just nasty. Have you got an access lock knife? You took it apart because, well, maybe you wanted to dye the handle scales, as one of my viewers wanted to do. And uh, I'll include his knife in this video. Just keep watching. Uh, or you just need to do maintenance. Uh, maybe you got something with a carbon steel, like this has got D2, and maybe there's a little bit of corrosion in there or something. You gotta take it apart, get rid of that rust, and then you have a terrible time trying to put it back together again. Yeah, if that's you, or if that becomes you, stick around. I'm gonna show you how I reassemble access lock knives. This video might be quite long. I'm going to leave a lot of stuff unedited in there to show you something about how it feels, how long it takes, and the frustration of working on an access lock knife. And then once you got it back together again, it's one of the best knives in the world. <laughs> That's the feeling. I just love it when they're working, and I just hate it when I'm trying to put them back together again. Stick around. We're going to see maybe learn a trick or two on how to put them back together again. Just so you know, this video is long. Um, there's parts in it where I show you the wrong things to do, but there's a lot of stuff where it's the right thing to do. Unfortunately, you know, with my setup the way I have, you know, the camera straight down, there's a big light. So I've got a light basically on my forehead, but I'm not actually over top of things. So sometimes it's hard for me to see what I'm doing and I end up pulling the knife off camera. Hopefully you can deal with that and still follow along with what's going on. I try to explain it clearly. Sometimes there's going to be text on the screen. If you have to pause it to read it, that, that hey, do what you have to do to get the gist of what I'm trying to tell you. Hopefully you're going to learn some stuff because I'm definitely going to teach some stuff. Stick around. So the knife that we've got here that I got to put back together again is the Roboto 2 by O Knife. So you need screwdrivers. Of course, you need the knife parts, and you need some tape. I like to use painter's tape. You can use masking tape if you need to, something like that. Usually comes in handy. Not always, you don't need it, but usually. So let's organize here to put this thing back together again. So the pin is in here, and hey, there's even, you know, one of the washers in there. So let's uh, try to get this organized. Okay, the main thing you do is You've got the pivot pin there, put the blade in place, make sure you've got the washers in place. That's good to go. You got the stop pin there, everything's there. And let's put this on, if I can get it in lined up just right. Now this is where you often need painter's tape. Uh, on this guy, we actually have a screw that goes in here. If you don't have screws there, this is where you wrap that around with some painter's tape. So you've got that together there. Now, now you might have one of those knives where you can't just have the pivot pin in there because the pivot pin, you know, is united with the screw head on one side. So you're going to have to try to do this with one handle scale on and the pivot, you know, screw in there already, sort of like this. And that's really hard to do. So what you sometimes have to do is have a screwdriver instead of the pivot pin in there. And so you're leaving the pivot pin in there for, I mean, so you're leaving the screwdriver in there for this part. Now try to get a screwdriver with a shaft thickness very close to the size of the hole so that it keeps everything lined up. Yeah, it does make it harder. I'm going to see if I can get an example to show you of that later on in the video. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see if that happens or not. But yeah, you need something in place of the pivot pin if you've got one of those pivot pins uh, that's not like this. This one's, we're very fortunate. 
that we have this one that has a screw on either side so we can have the pivot pin in place. Now the next trick is you take the access lock pin and you feed it through here and let's pull it up. Let's see if I can get everything in place properly. I got to get it in just the right orientation so that it can actually go into the lock. See right now it doesn't want to come like I'm pushing it that way but I can't get it to go over top of the tang of the blade because something's not lined up. So I got to get things lining up properly. There we go. Now it's locked. As long as that pin stays, this uh, access lock pin stays up there, that's good. So I know that's all lined up. So with one finger, I'm holding that in place. I've got to find the appropriate Omni spring. Oh, I grabbed the right one the first time. Slide it over there. And now I've got to try to put it, the tip in the hole there. If I can get it to... Ah. Yeah, and it wants to come off up here all the time. So it's not easily done, this part. It's a pain in the royal butt, but I got it. I've done so many of them. So I got that one on. Gingerly turn it over. You don't want anything to fall out. If you've got the you know screwdriver in there, you got to do it. Turn it over with the screwdriver and everything in place. Still holding everything together. The other Omni Springs got to go on now. There we go. Now the Omni spring has got a bent section right there. So that bent section's got to be pointing the right way. If you grab the wrong one, you're never going to get it into that hole because it's going to be pointing into the sky instead of into the hole. So there we go. That's on. At this stage, I'm almost finished. Now, if I've got the screwdriver in there, now's the time where I take the handle scale, slide it, you know, over the screwdriver, so down over the screwdriver. And if you have that other kind of system, now you hold this in place and you take your pivot pin and you follow the screwdriver through, pushing the pivot pin in. You have to do it really gingerly because if anything moves in there, it's not going to go all the way through. So you got to work it through and sort of wiggle it and stuff and get everything in there just right. But we don't have to worry about that. We can start putting the pivot pin screws in place. These guys are T8s, I think. Yep. There we go on that side. Got to be careful not to knock that Omni spring loose because that's easily done. There. Once you've got that snugged up, now you're effectively done. Now you could, you know, start using the knife. It's not sliding quite right. Not everything's perfectly lined up yet, but uh, you know, basically that's working now. If I can get it to sit right. Something's not correct. Something's not correct. Well, here, let me put these other screws on first and find out those will stay. Okay, that one's on. That one's on. Something's not right with these Omni Springs. And that's what happens sometimes. So we have to take it back apart and find out what happened to the Omni Spring. Now there's times when I do this I gotta take the knife apart and put it back together again several times especially when I first started playing with access lock knives uh, I did it an awful lot on and off on and off on and off to try to figure out what's going on that springs in place that springs still in place so what's not working on about what's not working about this thing it's catching somehow So what I'm trying to do is this pin, I'm trying to spin it to see if it's going to slide better, if it's in a slightly different spot. And I just have to play with that for a while until I get it right.
and this is hard for me to do because I got this camera right above me and this big circle light in my way. So it's hard for me to see what's going on. I don't understand what's going on with that. So let's take these springs off. Take that out. Take a look at it. What's going on? See, when it's just loose like this, it works just fine. I can push it all the way forward as far as it needs to go to hold the tang of that blade. That pin keeps moving. There we go. Okay, let's try it again. So holding that in place. So that's, yeah, that's one other thing that happens. It binds sometimes. If this loop, this loop that uh, is on this spring that comes around, if it's not seated all the way over that pin properly, it's going to create binding. It's going to create binding it up inside here in this section. And uh, it's just going to create problems. So that Omni spring was probably not seated perfectly when I had it together before. So let's try this again. Put the Omni spring on. And then get this uh, hook in the hole. Like Benchmade, when they made this, you know, they were being very creative, but it's not a very user-friendly system. It's uh, <laughs> not home maintenance friendly is what I want to say. Because they've got rigs and stuff that hold everything in place. So they've got like one human doesn't have to have four sets of hands. But if you don't have that kind of jig uh, to hold everything in place, yeah, it's uh, a lot harder at home. Until you get a knack for it. But even then, it can be frustrating sometimes. So let's put these pivot pin screws in. Not super tight or anything, just so that it's being held in place. Put the body screws in. It's good. I got it right. So really nice. Now I'm going to snug up the screws. Now I've tightened up the screws properly. Everything still works. Let's see. Yep. No blade play side to side. Very smooth action. That's how you do it. So let me now uh, take apart another one and show you that. This is the Ganzo FB760 tore down. Got some heavy duty Omni springs here and to show you how they work is this the right one yeah there we go there you go these have you know a fairly wide range they're not super compressed and they're a little bit thicker which is why the spring is so tough but yeah other than that very straightforward construction for an axis lock knife we do have um, some internal screws that are hidden, which does really help with reassembling it. So this didn't take long. It was just a little awkward. That pin, that stop pin just falls all over the place. We have to be really, really careful with this. So push the axis lock back a little bit again. Try to get it over there. There we go and rotate this without making it fall apart and without dropping the stop pin. Yeah, the stop pin fell. So yeah, this is going to take loads and loads of times doing this. It just, it's such a nasty step. It's very, very annoying. Um, sometimes what I've done is I've used a tiny bit of CA glue 
to glue it in one side. And I think I'm going to do that. I really need to do that this time. Actually, another idea that's a whole lot smarter, use a hot glue gun and just use the tiniest little bit of hot glue on the end there. And uh, that'll hold it in place while not being permanent. So I'm going to try that. I like to use these needle nose pliers. Makes it so much easier to uh, control and not get uh, stuff all over the place. There you go, just the tiniest bit of hot glue. Whoops. Maybe a tiny bit more than the tiniest bit. This isn't super hot yet. Maybe I should have waited till it was hotter. Oh, come on, Jake, don't take so long. Wow. Guess I. Yeah, now it doesn't want to fit in there. Oh, there. Yeah, there we go. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that's frustrating. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to squirt any more glue out. I'm just going to put the tip in there to make it hot again. Try again without burning myself. This fiddly work is annoying. It's just another one of the annoying things about this. I thoroughly dislike doing axis lock knives because usually it's a true pain. Yep, see I didn't get that in all the way. Get rid of that excess. Let's get it all hotter first. You know, if I get this, uh, if I get the liner a little bit warmed up, then the uh, glue is not going to heat up right away. Yeah, I said that all wrong, didn't I? It's not going to cool off right away, is what I should have said. Come on, get in there. Boy, oh boy, I'm having a heck of a time. And again, this light up top is really annoying me because I can't get my head over to view exactly what I'm doing. Sorry. Um, okay, that's done. There we go. Okay, so we've got that. Now, I don't know how long this has been running. Yeah. This video may get long. Okay, so we've got that on there like that. And now it's time to get this on without everything falling apart. Okay, and i got to push the access lock post back. And uh, not let anything fall while I'm doing it. There we go. Whoa. Go get under there. There, I can't got that under there. Now try to keep it on there while wiggling this down, but that post gets in the way, this uh, pivot pin. So push it down just the tiniest little bit. I've got this side together. I've got the access pin in place. Hopefully I hit record earlier on because I don't want to take this all the way back apart. Got that Omni spring on. Uh, these body pins are in place. Now I've got to try to put this uh, in place. I didn't do that before. I should have done it a long time ago. But it's just another thing that is probably going to not... There it is. Probably get in the way and be a pain because it's loose. So now try to line that up. Okay, so those pins are there. That's there. We're almost done. Believe it or not, we're almost done. Put this body screw on here, because this is an internal one. There we go. Now, how do we get this in there? Well, it's a bit tricky. 
Uh, these are still lubricated enough. I fiddle those through there. So there you go. See, I can get it close to the right spot. Now there is that stop pin or the access lock pin in the way. But what I need to try to do is put the pivot pin. Remember, it's got a flat side through all of this at the same time. So let's get it started. Get it oriented the right way to start. There we go. So now it's past that liner. Turn it over so I can see what I'm doing. I, I'm pushing on the pin with this finger and with this finger I'm pulling back on the axis lock so I got freedom there. So I'm going to try to fiddle this uh, pivot pin through. There you go. And now the pivot pins fiddled through. The ball bearings are in the right spot. The axis lock is in the right spot. You know, put the Omni spring on. Clickety click. Get in that hole, which is easier said than done, especially if I had nails. But I don't have much by way of nails. I'm one of those guys, when my pain gets really bad, I bite my nails, so it's a bad habit. We're pretty much done. Um, I forget what I was talking about before. <laughs> um, yeah, now I just have to put this on here, you know, put that screw on there, put that screw on there, you know, put uh, that screw on there, whichever one it is, and put the pocket clip back on. Oh, uh, wait a minute, the pocket clip screws on inside. So I get to take this all back apart again <laughs> and do it all. No, I don't. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Um, it's on this side. So take this off. Pocket clip goes on there. So I can put the pocket clip in there. Okay, crisis averted. I thought, well, other than dropping my screws on the floor, I thought I'd messed up, but yeah. Just have to put everything back in place, and of course when you slide this on, you gotta just slide it underneath the clip. And, um, yeah, then that's fine. Now where's that screw? Oh, I forgot to put my mic on. I'll just try to up the mic, the volume. Okay, I got the mic closer here now. I don't want to re-record that again. Uh, I would have put text on the screen if the audio was too quiet. I'll try to turn up the mic during editing. Yeah, because I don't want to redo that because that's annoying. It's just annoying. Let's put this screw in here. So there we go, that pocket clip's on there, and uh, yeah, I'm not going to put this together. This handle scale's a little bit dirty, I'm going to wash it first. But you got the idea, you slide this underneath here, you click it in place, if I can get it, there we go, put the screws in, you're done. Here we have a San Remune 9201 from one of my viewers. These liners are identical either way, so it really doesn't matter which side you choose. You just turn it to the side that you want. Um, but let's see, we can see that the washers were sliding on that side. Let's check this one. The washers were sliding on that side, so let's do it the same way that it was originally. And uh, there you go. Uh, let's get these put in place. These love to fall around and they are a true pain in the butt to do. But, uh, whoops. Sure, do it the wrong way around, Jake. Do it the wrong way around. Let me find a box to sit that on like that. Get my masking tape and tape that on there so that hopefully they'll stay. 
By the way, this guy's name's LJ. He does really nice dye work. So he dyed this in that deep burgundy. I think it was orange to start with. So those are on there. Uh, next, we have the pin to go in. And I should have put the pin in first. There we go, put the pin in like that. And now I've got to do the spring first. I keep doing these out of order. Let's put one of these on first and get the spring for it. Put it in the hole. Okay, so, so far, so good. Yeah, so far is the easy part. It doesn't want to stay in there. Get in there. Okay. Now, the reason it doesn't want to stay in there because it's together back here. So I need to make sure this stays apart. And uh, let's just tape that like that for now. It's just it's just temporary to hold the back spacers apart. Now let's put this in here. This can be so frustrating. Okay, so that is in place, but that's going to come off so terribly easily that it's just, it's no fun. But hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? All right. Let's try to get this liner on here now. Sorry, the G10 handle scale, what I mean. Which way is that? facing it's facing down okay I thought I had recorded the other footage but the other footage is gone uh, the battery died I didn't notice it so here we've got another knife because I've already returned that other knife to LJ oh by the way he'll accept dying jobs he even does uh, like I saw one picture and I'll probably post it where he had an orange handle scale and he had it fade from red to orange a really nice fade handle scale it looked really cool He'll do orders for you. You can ship him your handle scales. Don't ship him the whole knife. Ship him your handle scales from anywhere in the world, I guess. He'll dye them for you and send them back to you. Anyhow, this is the stage that we're at with the knife. I've got my blade installed. Well, here, I should do it this time. I will show you what I should have done before. Yeah, yeah. There you go, protect your fingers, protect your fingers. Because actually this knife is sharp. This knife's quite sharp. So the blades in place, the ball bearings or washers or whatever you have are in place. You've got a screwdriver holding everything in place. You take your pivot pin. This is a D-shaped pivot pin as well. And I stick it over the screw and I push it in as I'm drawing the screw back, the screwdriver. I gotta line it up just right. Which way was this? I think, oh yeah, the flat part of the D is across this way, so I gotta get it that way. Start getting it in there. Wiggle, wiggle, jiggle, jiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Maybe move the blade a little bit if it's not all lining up. There you go. And that popped it most of the way through. Now I'm almost through. I keep putting pressure on that screw until it gets all the way through. Now, I hope I got that tiny victory on camera because my camera battery just died, but I just wiggled that pin through, lining everything up, you know, using this to guide everything. We're almost done. Now, I just need everything to stay in place, especially with the Omni spring on the, you know, this side. So let's uh, get a blade here and cut this instead of tearing at it. Gently, gently, there we go. Get that off, there we go. Oh, here's a pin. Where did this go? Oh, this is just a guide pin right here. Good, good, that's not a big deal. 
Let's take these off. I'm going to keep this hand on here so it doesn't come apart. Sometimes things flex just when you least expect it and cause problems. So there we go. Those are off. That's in place. You grab this and get it in place as quickly as you can, gently. Keep the pressure on it. Screw that down. That's good. Keep the pressure on it. Get the second one in there. You're not trying to get them tight at all. You're just trying to get them in place. There you go. Put that on there. Put that in there. And tighten it down. So there's no one right way to do this, but what I've learned over the years, and sometimes, you know, I forget in the heat of trying to put it together, that big trick of arranging everything and then putting the pivot pin in after you've got one side and one liner in place, then you put the blade in place with the washers or whatever you have, and then put the pin in, and then once the pin's in, you're good to go. Now, I think I've over tightened this. There we go. So it's not perfectly dialed in yet, but uh, we'll get it there. So there's my long, long video. Thanks to my supporters. Thanks everyone for checking in. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. <laughs>